All right, we are in my Microsoft 365 tenant in the browser. You'll notice on the left rail, Copilot is listed. So this navigation rail is consistent between different parts of Microsoft 365. Here within Copilot, that same left rail, we have the work and the web modes. And you'll notice that these set of suggested prompts switch if I go between work and web. I'm going to stay in work because that is where I'm building this Copilot agent. The ability to start a new chat or refresh the uh, chat window. Enterprise data protection is on. And uh, there's a few other things along the top here. Below the suggested prompts is the prompt box where most of the action will happen in this uh, demonstration. And then on the right rail, I have a list of agents or coaches. Some of these are created within my organization. Some of them have been created by Microsoft. Clicking on see more, I can see uh, Jira Cloud, for example, is something this tenant subscribes to. So we have Jira. I can make that a favorite by pinning it above the fold and scrolling down and this may be below the fold in your environment i have get agents which is for finding additional agents provisioned by it and i have create an agent and this link brings us into copilot studio and it's where i'm going to create this new project management assistant agent so Switching back over to my PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to grab the description, cut and paste into Copilot Studio. So here within the agent builder builder feature of Copilot Studio, I put in this description that it is an AI powered assistant designed to streamline IT projects. Now you may want to change this to the type of project management in your in your work that could be a marketing project or it could be a construction or design project it's going to assist with internal project queries by retrieving information from sharepoint so i'll be doing that configuring in a minute notice there's the describe and configure modes but i'm going to enter this prompt to create this agent at least to begin the process of creating the project assistant agent so it asks for a name, and I'm going to suggest that you use the word test when you are, have others test, and I'm adding my initials so that if there's several people on the project team creating agents, we can all compare them, and we're not going to call them all the same thing. So now it's saying the name has been set. Let's define what the agent should do. I'm grabbing this set of instructions for the agent, and you'll notice that there are section headings that separate different aspects of this agent instructions. So it repeats that description I gave above. There is a scope and knowledge sources section, and it talks about finding information from SharePoint, how to handle out of scope queries and what types of projects we're talking about. So in this case, we have project frameworks that cover Agile, Waterfall, Scrum, Kanban, etc. Risk and issues management, and we'll give an example of that when it comes to budget, stakeholder communications, project metrics and reporting. The tone is recommended to be uh, bullet points and lists for clarity. Now, if I was creating an HR agent, I may want to have a different tone. If I was doing something on the legal front, I may want to have a more verbose response that really covered and detailed particular legal documents. But in this case, bullet points responses are unbiased and based on established project management practices. OK, entering that set of additional instructions, Copilot will then refine the agent 
and I can go into the configuration section. Great. So switching to configure, I could change the icon. The name, the description are repeated from the first section, getting to this important aspect of configuration, which is knowledge. Now, if I had a SharePoint repository with the relevant documents for our project management methodology, I could enter that here. I could turn on web search. In this case, I'm not going to have web search on because I really want to focus on internal information, information that is stored in our Azure DevOps Wiki, for example, and in our enterprise websites. So I'm going to enable those. And this is very important to get the right kind of results. If information was in JIRA, I might turn that on or Salesforce or ServiceNow. And going down further, if I had code interpreter, I might use that. I am going to turn on the image generator. And I'm going to review these default prompts. And I have to say these prompts look just fine. So I'm going to leave those as is. You'll notice that um, my results are automatically saved and I'm going to hit create. Copilot is thinking about it. All right, so there's a few things. This link only works for me. I can change those settings if I want to share this link more broadly. Uh, I can share that with anyone in my organization or specific users. I'm going to hit cancel because I want to test this first before I share it more broadly. Coming back into Copilot, I'm going to click on the agent that I am testing, the project assistant agent. You'll notice that it is now in the title, replacing the generic Copilot. You'll notice that the prompts have changed to those that we suggested in the agent. And now I'm going to try a few prompts, switching over to PowerPoint. I'm going to capture the prompt. And uh, what model do we follow in this project? And what are the activities? And you'll notice that it gives me an overview of the Scrum framework, uh, which is a popular Agile methodology that we use, and that the sprints typically last two to four weeks. And here are the Scrum activities. You'll see the cadence is specific to my organization. I can also ask additional questions that use more of Copilot's analytical skills. And I'm going to add my analysis of budget versus actuals on this project. And Copilot comes back with this analysis of the comparison. And I'm going to ask, please put analysis table. And it produces this table that I can cut and paste directly into a presentation. And I can copy and paste these cost optimizations uh, suggestions as well. So a very useful agent. Now, after doing sufficient testing, I feel it is ready to take the next step. I'm going to pin it here. And I'm going to go back into. Copilot Studio. Selecting this drop down box. To edit a particular agent. I can now remove that this is a test project assistant and remove my initials. I'm going to click update. And now coming back into Copilot, you can see that the name has been changed to project assistant. 
Now, as a user, I can choose not only to unpin that, removing it from my favorites, I can also uninstall it so that I don't have it here in my interface. But since I'm the author of it, I can still go back into Copilot Studio and modify the settings and the creator as well as the IT admins with sufficient privileges can delete this and this will permanently delete the agent and it'll be no longer available for any of its users and choosing delete that agent's been removed presumably because I've replaced it with something better <laughs> 